Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and we're going to get into some real fun stuff now, and that is going to be real numbers, complex numbers, fractions, and decimals. I'm going to try to cram all this into one so we don't have a bajillion videos for you to watch, but at the same time, I'll try to keep it short. So let's get started with real numbers. Um, also known as floating point numbers for us. It's a, a, a built-in thing called float. And so like a float of three will give you the floating integer or floating point number of 3.0. There's a standard for this to represent the, um, it's called double precision uh, binary floating point format. It's stored in 64 bits. And this is useful to know if you're doing scientific calculations. So if you're going to get into some scientific stuff, um, you should pay attention to this, depending on what your intent is. Um, if you're going to build web apps, then uh, maybe not so much. But it's divided into sections. You have a sign, you have an exponent, and a, a mantissa. And if you want to know more about that, go ahead and Google it, and I won't get into it. But um, there are different programming languages that give you different formats. So it's important to know whether you're using single or double precision. And Python uses double precision. The difference between them really is that single precision uses 32 bits and double precision uses 64 bits. Um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this. So if you look at, if I create a variable pi equals 3.141592, six was it five three six okay um however many you can remember you can put 3.14 whatever and then i made a radius of 4.5 and then i say area equals pi times and then in parentheses the radius squared but you don't really need these parentheses but it does make it easier to read because it will read the order of operations and then i just return the area we can see that this is the correct uh, area and that's pretty cool you can um, you can do that and we're using some fairly large decimals but nothing that's going to take up uh, a ton and ton of memory right um, so let me show you another um, the the inside the guts of what this float is actually doing so it's using the system so if I import sys and then I say sys dot float info we can actually get the information about floats and uh, what you'll see here is and this is a little difficult to read but sys.float info has a max uh, you've got your epsilon values here and minimum epsilon values and then our digits our mantissa the epsilon radix and rounds and if you're if you don't know what this all means that's that's okay um, but let's make a few considerations so first of all is that we have 64 bits to represent floating point numbers okay and that means we can at the at the most represent 2 to the 64th power of distinct numbers which is like just an insanely large number um, if you take a look at the max um, and epsilon values for float numbers you'll see it's actually impossible to represent all these numbers you you actually can't represent 2 to the 64th power numbers so um, there's just not enough space um, so they're approximated to the lowest or to the closest representable number and it's pro you you might be thinking well that really only applies to really big numbers or really small numbers right um, but actually, there's um, it, it it doesn't. So if I say 0 0.3 uh, minus 0 0.1, okay, times three, what do you think the answer to that is? Well, um, using the order of operations, we're going to do the multiplication first. So 0 0.1 times three is 0 0.3, right? In fact, let me keyboard interrupt with control C. So if I say 0 0.1 times 3, we should get 0 0.3. But look at this. There's this trailing number here. What is that? So it's it's an approximation when you do decimals, 0 0.1. It's an approximation. Because if I just do 3, it's 3. If I do 0 0.1, it's 0 0.1. But if I multiply them together, all of a sudden there's an approximation. 
Well then, if that's the case, you might have thought originally that 0 0.1 times 3 is 0 0.3, and 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 is 0, right? But it's actually not. Watch what happens. So 0 0.3 minus 0 0.1, oops, 0 0.1 times 3. What on earth is that? What is that? It should be 0, right? Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and what does this mean? Well, it tells you that double precision numbers suffer from this approximation issue even when it comes to simple numbers like using uh, 0 0.1 times 3. Um, and so it's important because um, it's a huge problem when you start handling prices and working with financials or if you're doing scientific data that uh, does not need to be approximated. But uh, we don't need to worry about this too much because it does give you a decimal format and we can just use that because it doesn't suffer from those issues. Um, but so just know that in some cases when you're doing what seemingly simple math that there is an approximation and that approximation only goes to 2 to the 64th power and that our epsilon values do not allow us to go that high to represent that many numbers and therefore this approximation can have unintended consequences like this problem right here. Um, so let's get into the complex numbers. So Python also gives you complex numbers um, and it just comes out of the box. Uh, if you don't know what they are, it's just a, a number expressed in like uh, A plus, like if I, if I will just type it out for you, like A plus IB where A and B are real numbers and i is an imaginary number like the square root of negative one um, or if you're an engineer j um, it's an imaginary unit and so you have the, or the the real part of the number and then the imaginary part of the number and um, i'll do a little example here so let me let me let me get out of here and clear this out come back in and then we'll go okay so c is going to equal 3.14 plus we'll say 2.73j, okay? And then we'll say c equals complex uh, 3.14, 2.73, which is basically the same thing as above because it gives you this complex thing out of the box. If I were to do this in a Python file, I could make a new file and just go like math.py. So if I were to do this here, you'd see that when I type complex, it actually turns green. And that's because it's an out-of-the-box uh, feature that you can use. So this is actually the same thing as this. Okay. Um, so if I did c.real, it's going to return the real number. If I do c.imag, it's going to return the imaginary number. If I did C dot conjugate, if I can spell it uh, with open and close parentheses, I can see that conjugated here. And if I did C squared, um, multiplication is allowed. You can do that. Um, if I did an exponent, uh, you can see that it will do that as well. Um, if I made a different one, I said D equals 1 plus 1J, just keep it simple, you can add and subtract. And so I could say C minus D, and it would be able to calculate that as well. So that's it on complex numbers. I don't expect most people to use this. Like I said, if you get into more of the a very scientific or very... Uh, complex mathematical financial calculations, then, you, then you'll be using this kind of stuff. And if you have questions about that, feel free to ask. I may not be able to answer them because I do not work in that industry, but I know enough about it to maybe try to answer your question. So then that brings us to a much simpler concept, and it's the last concept, which is fractions and decimals. And this will solve our, our approximation error that we had um, earlier. So I'm going to use a library, and I'm going to say from the fractions library, I want you to import fraction with a capital F, very important. Oops. Uh, let's see. Do I not have from, oh, hi, how's it going? From <laughs> fractions, 
import fraction. There we go. Um, so you can use this fraction function, which is kind of fun to say. And I'm going to take 10 and 6, okay? And it gives me this 5 and 3 thing. So what is that? It's actually simplifying your fraction, which is kind of cool. So if you have some ma some massive fraction, you can just type fraction, put those the numerator and denominator, um, first and second respectively, into this function, and it will actually reduce that for you. Um, in this case, uh, you know, that's exactly what it did. So let me try another example. So if I say fraction 1 comma 3, which we would know to be 1 third, plus fraction uh, 2 comma 3, which we know to be 2 thirds, that should equal 1, right? So fraction 1 over 1. So you can actually add fractions in Python. So while most people consider computers to be very decimal oriented, and when you get a fraction, you end up pulling out the old composition notebook and using a pencil, um, you can use the fraction function to add, subtract, whatever, uh, with fractions. And if I wanted to define a variable f as the fraction 10 comma 6, right, um, I can also grab from that namespace f dot numerator, and it understands what that is. And I can also grab f dot, and it simplifies it for you, uh, denominator. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Denominator. And it'll grab the denominator. Um, you can also do f in that namespace um, as underscore integer underscore uh, ratio open and close parentheses, and it will just is it'll show it to you as a ratio, so 5 to 3. Um, so as an integer ratio, this is a method um, that allows you, or that's uh, been added to integers and booleans, the as integer ratio. Um, it's helpful because it, it lets you um, use it without needing to worry what type the number of, of number you're working with. Um, and although this can be useful, it's not super common to find them, especially in like commercial software. I've actually never seen fraction used anywhere. Um, it's a lot more common to see decimal numbers being used um, because obviously precision is everything, uh, especially in science and or scientific and financial calculations. So that's where decimals come in. And that also has a library that we can use. And let's go ahead and check that out. So from the decimal library, from decimal, uh, import decimal as D. We'll just say D. What does that mean? It means I can just type D now. So D 3.14 gives you the decimal of 3.14. This removes the approximation issue that we saw earlier where I would just use an int um, of something because um, you, you won't see it in here. Int is just going to tell you 3. If I did float of 3.14, it's just going to return 3.14. But there, on the once you start doing some sort of um, calculations, there there is an approximation, as you saw with my 0 0.1 times 3 example, that happens, and that can cause some issues. So um, the other thing is you can use it as a string uh, as a string as well. So if I did a string of 3.14, which we know is not an integer, it'll convert that and say um, hey, this is a decimal of 3.14, right? So now let's go back to my original problem. So D of uh, 0 0.1, right? And then oh, let me do it without a string first. 0 0.1, um, what did I do? Oh, yeah, times the D of 3 minus uh, D of 0 0.3. So this should be 0 0.1 times 3 is 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 should be 0, correct? So check this out. Boo, we still have an issue, right? Um, so what happens when you do it as um, a string? So if I take my decimal, my floating point integers, and I turn them into strings, then what happens? This is an interesting um interesting little test that you'll be like, but why? Uh, string 
0. So in this case, it's correct, and you don't have an approximation error, which is kind of bizarre, right? And uh, one example for it, I uh, talk a little bit about this. So 1.4, um, and you can still use the as integer ratio from a decimal, right? Is seven to five, which is kind of cool. Like you can take a decimal and and use the as integer ratio and, and convert that, and bring it and return it back. So notice when we construct a decimal from a float, it takes on the approximation issue, as we saw with uh, the previous example, um, because um, the f it's coming from the float, so it's inheriting that from the float. So the floating point decimal is actually the root of that problem. On the other hand, when we create a decimal from an integer or a string the decimal has no approximation issues. So there's no quirky behavior there. When it comes to currency um, or any situation that requires like super precise calculations, um, you absolutely have to use decimals. It's like not even a thing. And most people, most programmers um, will, will it, when they, as soon as they start using decimals, um, decimal notation say oh this is a float and I need to change the data type to float and that's actually not true um, you should be using decimals because of the approximation issue so something to note especially like I said if you work in finance or science uh, industry of some kind um, be careful what kind of data types you use because there are inherent approximation issues with um, these double point floating numbers. Again, because two to the 64th power is uh, worth of numbers cannot be represented inside of this given the epsilon values that are available. This may have been way too much math for all of you, <laughs> but uh, um, I hope I hope it was helpful. Um, this is your built-in uh, numeric types. So in, in summary, we went over uh, integers, right? We went over Booleans, which is a subclass of integers. And we went over real numbers. We went over complex numbers, fractions, and decimals. So those are all of your numbers. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, move on to strings and bytes and get into something that's a little less number heavy. Um, it does have an abstraction that requires the use of numbers. Um, so you're not going to get away from numbers. Um, you don't have to go retake calculus, don't worry. Um, but I do recommend it. I love calculus. But um, we'll, we'll, I'll take good care of you. I'll make sure um, it's explained. But yeah, so let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to comment or, or whatever. But uh, this is something that people never go over this in Python courses. So I thought this was some really, really good information to include in here. And uh, I appreciate everybody for sticking with me through all this math stuff. And I'll talk to you later.